now we have uh, now that we understand a solution and we are dealing with the binary solution we'd like to understand how much of solute has gone into a solution okay why <clears throat> because that concentration that composition is important to us when we are dealing with the material that we are using right so maybe maybe oxygen gas is being used for respiration of a patient then obviously the composition of oxygen in the whole air that you're sending has to be very high the normal air the the patient it, it was not able to breathe normally with the normal air so so the so the concentration of oxygen has gone up now the oxygen that you're taking maybe as you know in a hospital you will have to tell what is the percentage of oxygen in whole of the solution okay well, that is that is one of the one of the applications of understanding it right maybe you are you are making an alloy of iron with carbon then you want to limit the percentage of carbon why because beyond beyond a percent say 2% 3 4% at 4% it becomes cast iron fine what do you mean by cast iron it it is very very hard but very 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 brittle okay so it will break fine so if you are if your aim is to make a machine part obviously you cannot tolerate 4% of carbon because it will immediately break slightest of impacts it goes away though it is very hard hardness and brittleness are quite two different properties right a thing can be hard but it could break <clears throat> hmm? hardness is something else hardness is you know uh, okay let me tell you so the, 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 how hardness is measured there's a there's a uh, there's a small pointed cone kind of thing okay and you you apply some force with it on something okay now the dent that it makes a small kind of dent that will make on that material that will decide the hardness of the material mind it okay so being hard is not being strong okay we start equating hardness with strength and that's why you're saying that if it breaks then what is the point how is it hard no it can be so for example clay that is not hard or or other forms of steel okay which have say say 0.2.4% of carbon they, they they might not be as hard but they will be very strong okay so so you take and there are a variety of uh, those pointed objects uh, that that hardness is actually that's why it is measured in brinell hardness we you call it bhn okay brinell hardness number okay which one is able to make what amount of impact okay and and they start becoming blunt also okay so so the moment after which it starts registering the impact or leaving the impact that that point is the bhn of that brinell hardness number so it comes in a number fine so so you understand there is a material and you are trying to 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 press something into it and it is able to resist you it is resilient so so it's fine so it is its hardness is high okay that's all that's all hardness is hardness never says that you 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 bump the material you throw it on the, on the ground and if it uh, stays kind of uh, intact no fine that is not the concept of hardness and and when it when it becomes that then you must have seen <coughs> many uh, the benches and the lamps and um, even cast iron beds they are they are made up of cast iron steel why because there they are not being subjected to a lot of uh, a lot of uh, i should say uh, say turbulence or pressures or or uh, movements right so for example a bench in the park that that stays there people come sit it's not kind of that you touch and it breaks obviously not okay but uh, it will not be able to take up a huge amount of impact fine so so the benches in the park that you must have seen the iron benches they are actually not iron they are actually cast iron so cast iron is 4% carbon okay those are cast iron benches and, and nowadays that cast iron furniture is also in vogue so it is pretty pretty hard okay 
So that's why you'd like to know the composition and the, the composition of a component, uh, normally the smaller component that is the solute is called the concentration. Okay, so, so the concentration, concentration is the composition of the solute in the solvent. Okay, by composition we mean how much, in how much, fine, you, you mean to say how much of the solute, in how much of the, and, and there, 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 that's why so many things come up. Now you may, you may like to express it as mass, you may like to express it as moles, you may, I am talking about the solute right now, you may express it in volume, you might express it in mass percentage and then this the 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 denominator so so concentration is is equal to the amount of now this amount could be mass volume okay mole part hmm? of solute divided by the amount, now this amount could be mass, again volume, okay, mm, volume could be, could be part, could be, could be moles but normally not, normally not, of now another. You see, you see how the variations will come in of the either the solvent or the solution, correct. So we have to be extremely careful about that, what we are talking about, okay. Now there is a qualitative way of saying that the the solute is less so you say you say a dilute solution no or people 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 say um, i'll take less sugar in my less sugar in my tea fine you'll have yes at your home they'll say don't put much sugar now you never know what much means fine but we seem to understand you say, okay fine we understand Hmm? But you can understand how subjective a way that is. So maybe a fellow should be saying, I take only half a teaspoon or maybe quarter of a teaspoon in a, in a cup. Now what kind of cup? Is it a coffee mug or, or a cup? Okay. So, so you understand that subjectivity that he builds in. He says less sugar, fine. How less? There are people for whom half a teaspoonful will be a lot of sugar. Correct. Even taste-wise, I am saying. Hmm? And, and there will be people who will have no problems in two teaspoonful of, say, sugar, right? And then when you say in a cup, then what is the size of the cup? So you are actually trying to do this. What is solvent and what is solute, you know? And you have to specify. Now, if he had been specific that if, if it's, say, say, 200 ml, then I will be taking a quarter teaspoon full, okay, or maybe say 5 grams of sugar in that. Then things will become quite easy to understand. And that is the quantitative way of, of branding the concentration, right? So, so there is a, there is a, hmm? Hmm? No, there are, we do not use it, at least in India, but there are scales in the kitchen. Normally, 
if you go to foreign lands you'll see people have scales in their kitchen which are capable of measuring these things here they are capable of measuring it so maybe dilute or concentrated okay or more or less hmm so but but that does not that is an absolutely subjective way of branding things so we come to the quantitative methods okay the quantitative methods of expressing concentration quantitative methods of expressing concentration now you'll have to many a times the definition itself tells you what we are talking about but it does not tell you one thing that whether we are talking about a solvent or a solute fine a solvent or a or the solution so that part you have to concentrate the first so the first thing that we come across is mass percentage okay so so mass percentage the first is the first is the mass percentage and we call it weight by weight we <laughs> not call it mass by mass we call it weight upon weight why because mass into g is our weight okay and or we we call uh, you must you must uh, uh, must have heard this mass weight hmm? what's your mass we say 60 kg weight that's also a term 60 kg weight tells you see when when we ask someone what's your weight and we tell 60 kg from the viewpoint of the physics we are absolutely wrong fine i asked you mass you are telling me force okay you are telling me weight mass and weight are not the same thing in physics somehow in the layman's term it is same so so how we convert we should be saying what's your weight it is 60 kg weight 60 kg weight implies the weight due to 60 kg of mass that will be about 600 newtons right but but you you do not uh, express it like that so if if someone asks you and technically 60 kg, 60 kg weight no come on when you say 60 kg it is without without g why you you think that g in kg is due to g but they convert it into mass they do not tell you the when you say when you are saying 60 kg you mean to say that that, that you your mass is only 6 kg and 60 kg 60 newton is the force that you are applying right ha huh? what think hmm so mass percentage mass percentage so so i i understand that that we are talking about mass right mass percentage we are talking about mass but one thing has to be kept in mind it is mass percentage uh, mass percentage is equal to is equal to the mass of the component that is mass of the solute mass of the component that is solute divided by mass of the mass of the solution so for the solution you have the you have that solute included there the solute is included there it is included right so so when i say when i say this is 10% sugar okay into 100 into 100 has to come in to convert it. otherwise it will be a fraction right so 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 when i say 10% sugar solution what do we mean 
टेन ग्राम ऑफ शुगर टेन ग्राम ऑफ शुगर टेन परसेंट वेट बाई वेट यू अंडरस्टैंड यूल हैव टू राइट टेन परसेंट डब्ल्यू अपॉन डब्ल्यू वाई बिकॉज बिकॉज द मोमेंट यू एक्सप्रेस इट इन टर्म्स ऑफ परसेंटेज यू नेवर नो वॉट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सो सो दिस टेल्स यू दैट दिस इज मास परसेंटेज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सो इट्स टेन परसेंट डब्ल्यू अपॉन डब्ल्यू सो टेन परसेंट शुगर सोल्यूशन मीन्स टेन ग्राम ऑफ शुगर इन हंड्रेड ग्राम ऑफ सोल्यूशन नाउ इन दैट हंड्रेड ग्राम टेन ग्राम इज टेन ग्राम इज शुगर सो टेन ग्राम ऑफ शुगर इन नाइंटी ग्राम ऑफ वॉटर so that the huh it can be anything right water what sugar so instead of water we can take anything right ha so milk ha ha could be milk also but but don't 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 involve milk because milk itself is a mixture and we are dealing with binary mixtures right we are dealing with binary solutions if you if you say milk then milk has at least 20 more components into it okay fat protein and what not Mm. it's a colloid actually milk itself is a colloid so you are actually mixing a solid into a colloid so so that becomes a different thing so that's why i said water so 10 g of sugar now now uh, and there are other things also obviously sugar will not dissolve in kerosene right okay so so fine mm, not even suspension it will simply not dissolve just sit there Mm. it will not also be kind of hovering so 10 g of sugar in 90 g of water so that the mass of solution is mass of solution will have to be 100 is equal to 100 g and that's why that's why uh, mass percentage percentage is equal to 10 upon 100 into 100 so that is 10 percent we get the point had we taken had i had you taken 100 g of water then what would have been the mass percentage if i dissolve 10 g of sugar into it can you tell me 100. if i dissolve 10 g of sugar in 100 g of water tell me the mass percentage hmm mayan 10 g of water 100 by 11 has an equivalent 9.9 hmm into 100 so that'll be 9. Point? No 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 9.1 don't don't calculate don't fall into traps Hmm? Don't fall into traps. Nine point zero nine. Hmm? Nine point zero one. Then it will be nine point zero one. You are telling nine point nine nine. Hmm? 